Hey, we're back. This is really interesting. So I, I haven't worked in like two months, which if you know me, is pretty crazy because I'm a let's get it type of guy. But um, a few years ago, I basically started this new thing of not working in December and January. So both of those two, both those two months are basically for holidays. I, I travel, um, I can reconnect with friends, family, that sort of stuff. And I started it because um, years ago, I noticed those were my two craziest month, uh, months. December, because I'm trying to literally close every deal known to man. And January, because I'm very like, let's go, let's get it. And it got to a stage where all that pressure was almost debilitating. Like it got to the stage where I was in my head a lot. I just had a lot of pressure on me. So I just said, you know what, Mike, you work hard, just take the two months off. Those two really, really busy months, take it off and, you know, um, the world won't crash and burn, you'll be fine. And so far for the past sort of three years now, I've been doing that and yeah, I'm not dead. Things are going well, businesses are still alive. Um, but I wanna talk about sort of what I learned in, this, in these two months off um, that maybe you can apply if you're someone who's super busy or you're also someone who's working sort of hard all the time. Um, context, I spent the two months in America. So I was traveling in America, I went to a, different, a, a few states in America, spent time with family and spent a lot of time in New York and I have lots of thoughts about New York, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but before I get into it, if you are interested in videos like this, then please uh, subscribe and turn your notification bell on so you can find out when I have more videos about this. What I really wanna do this year, Happy New Year by the way, is um, create, and really for the next sort of five, six, seven years, is create content that will sort of document the journey of building really what I think at least are meaningful things, uh, the, the low points, the high points, but also leave some clues as to sort of what it's actually like trying to grow something from scratch. Um, and yeah, I'm really big on people developing themselves and as you grow and develop, naturally the work you do will be better. So even if you're not an entrepreneur, I think there's lots of life lessons that are applicable to you. Anyways, that being said, I grew up loving America. Um, like most people, we watched American TV growing up. It was, you know, that's a raven, was as a Waverly place, Lizzie McGuire. So I've always been obsessed with America. So these past three years, for me, America's like a game. It doesn't feel like a real place. And in many ways, it's not a real place. So being in America, for me, was the perfect holiday destination because I just get to live there, to be there and just look around like, this is a simulation. Like, how are these people real people? You know, so yeah, I spent time in America. The truth is you don't have to go to America. You can just go somewhere that brings you joy, somewhere where mentally you connect with like no work. So for me, I think I would, very, I would find it very hard to work in America because for me, it's just a massive play in, playground essentially. Um, and it's funny, I think the more time you spend in New York or any part of the world, the more that the gloss starts to wear off. So, you know, I used to go to America for two weeks here, you know, whatever. Being there for like a month, I was like, okay, I can see it for what it is. You know, the gloss is wearing off. In fact, the last three, four, five days of the holiday, I was so ready to leave. I was just tired. I was over the whole subway thing and just everyone just, I, I, I was done with that. So America was fascinating. America smells generally. My sister who lives in Texas, she used to always talk about, oh, when you come in the house, take off your your outside clothes. And I used to be like, outside clothes? What's she talking about? She'd be like, oh, your outside clothes, you know, they, they, they smell like outside. And I was like, this woman's doing way too much. What, what is she talking about? What's this outside thing? Spending a day, one of the days I spent in, in New York taught me this. So I, I just landed in New York, whatever. I went for a run. When I came back in, I just remember being like, what's that smell? Now it's not sweat or whatever. Like I'm used to that. So that, that wasn't an issue at all. But I was like, something smells funky, just different. And then I picked up my clothes and I, and I was like, why? it just smelled like, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it smelled like outside, <laughs> to be very frank, right? I was like, this is just not, it's not the conditioner. It's not, it just smells weird, like, like construction or like outside. And then that's, that's when I realized it actually smells. And then me being me, I obsess over things. So the minute that happened, I just started watching. So I, I literally, this is gonna sound so dumb, but I changed my clothes, I went back outside and I went for a walk and I came back in. And I smelled my clothes and I was like, huh, it smells like outside. And it got to the stage where I just started noticing it. Every single time I would go out, when I came back in, 
I would literally sniff my clothes and be like, yeah, it just smells like I've been outside, which is so weird because in the UK, that's not a thing. If you're from America, you're watching this, it's just not a thing. Yes, if you're like, maybe you go to like somewhere where they're cooking lots of food, yeah, you might. But if I go for a walk, I don't come back going, my clothes stink, like that doesn't happen. But in America, I can only wear things once. The minute I wear it out once, I can't wear it again because I noticed it. And here's the other thing as well. Because I have friends in America, every time I met them and I would hug them, I would be sniffing their clothes and I would realize they all smell like outside. <sighs> Detour. But anyways, that was something I learned is the whole outside thing. And then, um, yeah, I think one fascinating thing about America as well is just like how you know, obviously, I think it depends what community you're in. I have a lot of friends that work in banking. I have a lot of friends that, they, that relocated from the UK to, to work there, in New York particularly. And even though they're in good salaries, it's just so interesting to me how everyone's living like just above the breadline. That's what I noticed there. You know, a lot of my friends who obviously grew up here have adopted the, the culture there of just work. That all they do is work. There is literally no play. Or their play is like, oh, let's go to happy hour, let's go drink and then back to work. And that, and I just thought to myself, this is a really bad structure. I remember talking to an investor once, actually, that was saying that he could, like, you know, he made these millions in New York, but he was saying, I could never live in New York because it's a, it's a young person city. You know, that whole work, 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 work thing doesn't work when you've got kids and you, you want to kind of explore different parts of your life. So that living above the breadline thing was really sad to see. Literally, everyone's just like worrying about when they're, especially all the single people, like when their um, lease is coming to an end, they're like, oh my gosh, my lease is coming to an end. Now here, once your rent finishes or whatever, or your rent, you just extend it. Or it's just not a thing to be like, oh, oh, my lease. I must have heard that lease thing from like 10 people there. Everyone's just like, oh, my lease is coming to an end. What am I gonna do? Oh, who am I gonna live with? My whole life has to change. And you kind of go, it's just a lease. But it's because the lease is so expensive for them. People make their life decisions from lease to lease especially when they're single, which is quite fascinating. But the one thing I will say, and I'll stop this rant about America, that I really, really enjoy about them, about a lot of people, especially in New York, is how optimistic people are. Like, I met people who literally were like, let's move to a different state and just try again. And, and I just thought to myself, wow. Maybe because I'm from London, but the idea from, the, the, the thought, sorry, of someone from London being like, oh, let me move to Wigan and make it work, or let me move to Manchester. Nah, we stay exactly, like, listen, where this office is, where my office is, I grew up literally 40 minutes that way. My school is just down there. Like everything is right, like it's funny, I, I've traveled, I've done all that stuff, but I've ended up exactly where I grew up. Which I think is a common thing for Londoners, is you'll go to university, but very seldom do you stay in your university. Um, some might, but most people move back home, they, they, they kind of set up shop around their house, and they basically live where they grew up. So that optimism of let's just try things, I really, I actually really enjoy that. Um, especially about around some of the people I met there. They, they really had that, yeah, let's, let's make it work. And I was like, you know what? I can get behind this, this is quite cool. Um, and, and I guess I understand now why people don't leave America because honestly, there's so much to explore within the country. Like really, there's, there's really no reason to go to another country unless you're into like, you know, certain things like seeing the Eiffel Tower or seeing the Leaning Tower of Pisa, like seeing those like wonders. Apart from that, if you want hot, there's hot. If you want really, really hot, they've got that. If you want really, really cold, they've got that. If you want suburban, if you want mountains, if you want valley, like they've got, they've got everything. And so, so you could just move from state to state and you're basically fine. But overall, um, I appreciate America for what it is. I appreciate New York for what it is. But um, for someone like me, I doubt I could actually live there and be fully happy. I would have, there would have to be a deep purpose. You know, you know when like, an angel appears to you, there'd have to be a deep purpose for me to go and actually live there. But what I wanted to get, I got, which was rest, recovery, um, um, time to think. I've got a lot of big decisions to make this year. We've got lots and lots of amazing things happening this year, which again, if you're subscribed, you'll find out as I unveil and reveal some of them. I'm always sitting on so much. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite hard, but I'm kind of used to it. I'm always sitting on stuff. There's so many things I do that you know how to say, you can't say that, you can't say. So I'm just sort of used to just being like, mm, when it's time to say it, I'll say it. But there's so many exciting things happening this year. 
And so that's one of the reasons I took a break as well, is I really wanted to just kind of center myself and get ready for what's going to be a, a year of, of, of big decisions. So yeah, that's some of the stuff. And should you take time off like I've done? Um, I think if you're a busy person, it is imperative for you to take time off. Um, because, and you'll be familiar with this phrase, it's very simple, sometimes you get so deep into what you're doing, you can't see the wood for the trees. Um, or the trees for the forest. Essentially, if you're too close to a problem, sometimes you need to be pulled away just so you can approach it with fresh eyes or so you can consider the bigger picture. And I think some of us who are working in our business, we get so busy doing day-to-day -day tasks, managing the mundane little things. That you're not working on the business. You're working in the business, but not on the business. And if you're going to be a successful founder, CEO, chief exec, project manager, whatever it is, you have to be able to distinguish between working in the business where you're doing the kind of day-to-day -day stuff, but also working on the business where you're thinking, how is this thing growing? How is it developing? What's the general shape it's taking? Um, and I will be honest, I was way out of kilter. I was so busy chasing the next thing and sorting out the next article and this meeting here and this issue here and the H chart. But I'm not, you know, if you ask me what's happening with the whole thing, I'd be like, uh, I don't know. So the break I took, the two month break I took really helped me zoom out and go, how is this whole thing working? And I think that's what it will do for you. So hope that helps. Uh, me ranting, telling stories. I don't even know what I did with this video, but happy new year. Looking forward to this, to this year. And um, yeah, that's what I think about America.